Okay, so we're recording. Appreciate everybody coming out. Like I said, I'm really looking forward to this uh, particular event. I have been working on putting together my methodology and um, thought I had it complete uh, the last time, but got to um, thinking about these ranges um, and got an indicator to um, show the range, the average range that I liked a lot, and then I improved it, which is just phenomenal. So I can't wait to show you guys what I've been working on, and we'll get started. Again, I appreciate your coming out and uh, participating today. Uh, the recording, there, there will be a recording that everyone will get. And so let's get started. Um, appreciate Top Step Trader hosting me, having me come out today. I know that um, a combine is something that a lot of people uh, try to achieve. And um, the fact that you don't have to use your own risk to start your trading uh, account. You can use someone else's risk with very low uh, capital. Um, but then there, you know, the guidelines are very stringent. So you have to be very specific and uh, really, you know, fine tune your entry. So you're looking for something that's going to be more of a, um, a high percentage trade location um, and to give you the most bang for your buck. So I think today might help you. Uh, I hope it will help you uh, with what we're going to introduce. Um, so today what we're going to do is look at the market structure overall and how the JATS methodology, you know, plays into that market structure. Um, as many of you have been following, have known, um, I do have a particular methodology that we'll go through and uh, very briefly, and then we'll take a look at this great new indicator uh, that's going to be available uh, for NinjaTrader 8, uh, the PT indicator and the PT is for profit target. So, um, you know, it's like you get in a car, you're going somewhere, and if you have kids, the first thing that they start saying is, how, how long is it going to take? You know, when are we going to get there? That's sort of like the same thing with trading. You know, should, you know how far is the range going to go? How far should I be trading? When should I let the pedal off, you know, the gas? Uh, and take my prop, you know, take my marbles, get off the table, and uh, be happy with what I've got. So I think this will help you um, get some good ideas for how to to uh, address those questions. Um, I'll also talk about, you know, managing the Unirinko bar size based on the ATR. Uh, for those of you who don't like to trade the minute bars, they can be quite expensive, you know, to wait for those pullbacks. Um, and if it does reverse on you, you've lost all of the money that you had gained. Um, so it can be quite harrowing. Um, so a lot of people will like those unit wrinkles for that reason to sort of um, lessen that risk. And then we'll take a look at Bloodhound and Blackbird add-ons for the Ninja Trader 8 and invite everyone out for an open house starting tomorrow and next week, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, so that you can really see uh, the indicator in action, you know, with the market um, and see the other indicators and Bloodhound templates and look at Bloodhound and Blackbird. Uh, there is a Black Friday Cyber Monday offer that's very, very special, so be sure and stick around to the end of the session today. Um, I have been an independent software vendor for the NinjaTrader ecosystem now, going on for a few years, and have enjoyed it very much. I have expanded my um, methodology now. I think I have put the last piece of the puzzle together for what I'm working on, and will have plenty to do with this um, latest addition to the methodology. So I think with um, everything that I have done, I am all set and very happy very happy with the way I have framed uh, my trading methodology and glad to share it with you. Um, I highly recommend if you're not familiar with Shark Indicator's Bloodhound add-on for NinjaTrader that you take a look at it. It allows you to code your own strategies without coding. So drag and drop logic, very, very simple. And the Blackbird um, money management platform uh, is just fantastic for managing your trade. So um, let's get started on the webinar. Uh, the disclaimers, the usual disclaimers that you've seen, the webinars are for educational purposes. 
and um, this is not a solicitation that you buy or sell any securities. Um, please be aware that um, futures trading does contain substantial risk, as you know. It's not for every investor. You can uh, lose all of your trading account, so please use risk capital only for trading, and past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results which ties into the next slide on the hypothetical performance. The markets are closed. We're looking at screenshots. This in no way means that what I'm showing you on the screenshots will be replicated tomorrow. Um, so there is a high degree of risk uh, with looking at screenshots because that does not mean that the, the market will you know, behave like that going forward. Market structures do change. And that's what we're going to look at our first slide. You know, um, it's not only that market structures change, but they're really uh, fractal. So you, this could be a 15-minute chart or a 60-minute chart or a 180-minute chart or a daily chart. It looks the same uh, from a 2-minute to a 180-minute. So you've got um, a rally up on the left side, and then you've got – your rally up, your good range consolidation, and then you have your sell off. I call this the hui part. The rally up can be um, the slow, methodical, grinding way up. You're not sure if it's going to go higher. You know, stay with that, you know, trend continuation or get out of it. Looks weak. And that's one thing that this indicator that I'm going to show you is so fantastic um, to help identify that. The easiest part to trade in the futures market is the sell-off because you have that high um, range expansion to the downside that's very easily recognizable, much more easily recognizable than any of this other part. So um, if you're looking at, you know, getting an idea for a combine, maybe you just want to wait for that right shoulder and look for markets that are selling off um, and look for those um, trades that we'll show you coming up on the um, screenshots that we'll be going forward with. For my methodology, um, uh, and anyone who knows what I've been working on, the first thing I found was momentum, and it's on all of my charts, um, and it's on the market analyzer. I've got it up uh, at the top of the market analyzer um, on three different time frames, 60 minute, 15 minute, and five, and five minute or three minute, depending upon my mood. Uh, sometimes the charts work better with five minute versus a three, but I'll interchange um, this lower time frame from a three to a five. Um, but definitely you want the momentum to be in synchronization with the higher time frame trend whenever possible and stay with the market in that direction, especially, you know, looking for that lowest time frame to be anchored. Um, if you don't have, if you see zeros on your market analyzer, it's going to be flat, choppy market conditions. There's no doubt about it. You're not going to have a cohesive thrust. You could have a low range drift, but more likely than not, you're going to have momentum on your side uh, when you're trading. The next thing I look at is linear regression. I also have that on my uh, market analyzer in three time frames, five minute, 15 minute, 60 minute. Um, and again, when the markets are con in confluence all together, um, they, this entire board will be green all the way across or red, depending upon the direction. When it is like a very strong directional market, that's when you know that you can go in and just uh, pretty much pick up all the pullbacks and the um, tiny retracements and stay with that trend continuation. Uh, linear regression also, I have an indicator to show I have uh, separated the linear regression bands. I have a middle trend band, um, and then um, 
I have offset that um, that you can use to gauge when the market gets to the tippy top of that range of that um, ATR off the main trend line. So um, that'll be helpful for you when you see that uh, linear regression indicator because that gives us our football field. Sorry about that. So we'll know using the linear regression when you get to those outer ranges that you're subject to um, having price revert back to the mean. So you can stop trying to push out from that area. Very helpful and on multiple time frames. So the Ninja Trader Market Analyzer has been very, very instrumental for me. Uh, first started out with this higher time frame trend and then graduated on up, bringing in the multi, um, multiple time frames, linear regression and momentum. The next thing I started looking at was this standard 14 period range. If you think about it, you've got ATR, RSI, stochastics, Many, many things that um, the 14 period SMA is probably the most used indicator of all indicators. Um, 14 period is a pretty standard default uh, range period. So I wanted to find that 14 period high and low on multiple time frames and then um, play with that range. Um, trying to get, um, you know, directional bias and um, targets. So I um, have had um, played with around with that for a while and finally got uh, the PT1 out that gave me a slope and the, um, the values um, that I was able to put into the market analyzer to give me this special uh, custom time period uh, for my targets for intraday trading. So I knew that I had 18 points like for today to get to the first target, 36 points for the uh, second target and 51 for a full target for today uh, for an opportunity. Um, when you look at the slope of that, um, profit target um, indicator, you can tell if the range is um, contracting or expanding. It doesn't really help a lot with the indexes, the uh, equity indexes to have a downslope because the market can give you that slow drift higher on a downsloping market. And that we'll look at some screenshots on that. It's infuriating to me because I want to see an upslope to go long and a you know a downslope to go short or a strong slope to go long or short. But just because you have a downslope contracting range getting smaller and smaller and smaller does not mean that price won't keep drifting up. It often does, so that you have to get used to that. So, but I pretty much nailed it with that slope and um, I really wanted to see those ranges on my chart. So um, we'll look at these statistical levels and multipliers in just a second. And I was able to finally get the um, values on the chart, which is just, you know, absolutely um, going to be giving us a huge leg up. <clears throat> and so this is what I'm talking about. Um, right here, um, let me see, uh, I've got that 15 minute time frame <clears throat> that I use for my levels. So I don't have to worry about calculating on the spreadsheet anymore and sending my spreadsheet out with the calculations. Um, I've got the, the, uh, the 180 minute time frame now on the chart and I can look at my lower time frame uh, numbers that I've used on the chart. This was a 15 minute chart 
so these numbers aren't going to match these levels. This is actually the actual uh, session time frame. Session time frame, sorry about that. I've <clears throat> tickle in my throat. Um, that I have been using for targets intraday trading between 7.30 in the morning and 10.30 in the morning, and we've been nailing them. We'll, we'll look at some screenshots. Um, we've been hitting our targets over and over and over. So there's PT1 and 2 that got hit, and then today was a very small range. Um, PT1 and 2 got hit again, and you can see they get to the level and then respond and reverse at these levels um, all the time. So um, I plot daily charts, 60-minute um, time frames on a two-minute chart. Um, we'll take a look at some of this stuff. But when you get the range expanding, it makes it very easy to go inside and have the confidence when the range is moving up in an uptrend. That makes sense. You want to see that range expanding and then you go for those targets and so that you can hold your position or you know get back in at a lower level shooting for those upper targets because your range is still expanding. Range starts pulling back and that's where you would assume that price is going to start failing and coming off of those levels. But again, like I said, um, that assumption can be false, as I will show you, because you can get that updrift on a lower range. <laughs> it's infuriating. I don't know why it does that. But um, <clears throat> we'll take a look at it. Here's a two-minute chart with uh, 60 minute. Uh, profit target levels and uh, the same concept um, that from the custom time periods so I took a three hour time period and averaged it for my levels and then here's the 60 minute um, chart 60 minute uh, range profit target levels and there are so many um, ideas for trading strategies with this you do not know since I got that I just got the indicator out today so um, I haven't had time to put together the um, bloodhound templates I'll be working on that this month um, but you can see in a good uptrend anything below PT1 in a good indicate that the bottom that I have PT A and B um, B for the blue and A for above. Uh, if you're in a strong uptrend, this is where you want to be engaging the market. Ideally with momentum. So when momentum starts going up, no help here on the range. It was just a flat range, but price melted up. So, um, you know, you just have to be aware in the equity indexes, you're going to get that, um, you know, the jellyfish um, where you just floating up on a long um, versus getting the strength of the market. This is very helpful. So in a combine, when you see that range expansion and you see your momentum, that's when you can have the confidence to come in, especially if you put this with your other indicators and your other levels and use this as confirmation, um, then you can really get behind or you just may want to wait until it you know, gets above your filters, your averages, your trend filters or something, and then enter the trade. Um, but um, when we get it into the Bloodhound portion of the webinar, it'll make more sense to you how I've been using this together with linear regression momentum and uh, show you how to, you know, how we'll be using it going forward with these ranges, uh, locations. Um, so I'm very, very, very excited. As you can see, the market responds to these levels very well. If it's inside uh, the PT1, that's your range box, that's your sideways. Anything out and above these levels is a good indication 
that that's going to be taking off to the upside and you'll want to be reaching for these upper ranges anytime you get that um, hammer or your wick on that upside range you know that it's going to come back to the middle of the range and so here's your you know opportunity where you can get 30 points or 20 points uh, pretty easily um, you know just realizing where it you know here's the middle of the range there's the outside and um, so you know like draw a map right <laughs> so um, very very good very very good price action um, for this chart and that was just what today yesterday so all of these are brand new um, screenshots this is I'm not like going back months ago and cherry picking stuff this is all very very current activity <clears throat> Here's a 15 minute chart with daily PT levels, uh, price target levels. And again, um, just understanding the concept, we're in an uptrend. So anything below the PT1 would be on the lookout for that reversal. And uh, unfortunately the reversal came on a um, downtrend. So there's that wall, you know, the, <clears throat> the slow drift up, the low drift. Uh, but then you got, you know, momentum behind it and um, price started taking off. Um, this you understand much better. So um, I'll show you how to get the differences between the high and the low on that slope. And then now we have our ranges to trade to, whether it's a daily, a 60 minute, a 180 minute, a 240 minute, whatever you want to do to set your targets. And again, the um, the the basis for this is the standard deviation so the green line is one full standard deviation of the daily range so when it gets to that first standard deviation that's where a lot of algos are going to be sitting there hitting that coming back in to the middle of the range right <clears throat> If it gets outside that standard deviation and starts taking off, you know it's a huge impulse day. So you'd be, you know, just piling in with, you know, feet, feet, sand, hands, right? But um, otherwise, in the middle, just you know, trade to the opposite band uh, and use it with confluence with your other indicators, market profile, pivot points, yesterday open, high, low, close, your standard. Um, uh, trading sessions but your daily levels work out really good you can put it on a 60 minute chart a five minute chart you can um, mix and max, match these higher time frame levels but this is a you know just getting that um, standard deviation the white lines are the first PT1 above and below the middle of the range and um, that's sort of like one half of a standard deviation so here's your first deviation, here's your second. So by the time it gets out that second band, you should be seeing price turn around. And if you, when we look at the lower time frame charts, you'll be telling, you can tell very easily when price escapes the um, second standard deviation is still taking off. Um, don't be fading it. You'll you'll see that you may not want to participate in it because you know that it's not going to go that far but it's in that last gasp impulse move up or down. So let's take a look at the next screenshot here. Um, here is the opening range indicator and uh, the momentum and the um, PT indicator at the bottom just showing slope. And here's that, um, you know, you just want to get to know your multipliers. Um, one half is seven. Uh, point and a half is 21, two points is 28, three is 42, so I'm just using um, EMAs, and that works pretty good on a minute chart. Um, so anytime that you're looking for, you know, a methodology, and if you just stick to the, you know, the divisibles into 14, I think that's a pretty good one to have or to use. Um, certainly shows you your consolidation, your low points, and you can confirm that with the low um, 
um, averages on the um, profit target because this is showing you very low range between that high low of that 14 period uh, of your chart. So um, keep that in mind and as you see something expand out with momentum and your averages are widening out, be looking for those higher targets. That's when you want to be coming in and holding a trade and then trying to get up. This momentum is wonderful. Uh, you can see clearly the divergence here on the momentum as this came, did come back to the average and then eventually roll over. Um, here is the same screenshot, but just with the uh, linear regression added to it. And this is where I was telling you I have offset the linear regression line, the main trend line with the bands on the upper and lower. So these are just offsets that you can control. Um, if you just want to show a three or a seven or something like that to get your boundaries, the three being um, where a lot of algos will just roll over on that three offset. And of course, when it gets to the out of bounds areas, those are the great locations to bring it back to the middle of the range. So those are very easy, easy trades for a combine, just waiting for your extremes, trading them back to the middle or um, trend trading, and then waiting for those opportunities to match with momentum. You want the momentum to be above zero and, you know, ideally climbing with an expanding range, but it doesn't always work out like that. So um, be looking um, more for your momentum um, and strength of the ATR, um, you know, you get a big bear or a bull bar or bear bar, stay with it, right? Especially on these lower time frames. So um, that's more so than, you know, don't discount uh, a long setup just because you've got a low uh, range uh, contraction. It can, it can drift up for, for a mile. I prefer to sit out of those drift ups I like you know to go with the range expansion but um, you can you know certainly not discount a trade just because it's drifting up that we'll see in just a second that that drift up works really well on the indexes here is the bloodhound just showing you uh, the slope um, how easy it is just to get involved when price is moving on that range expansion up or down so when range expands, it doesn't mean direction. It just means um, the range is expanding. You've got to figure the direction out yourself, however you do it. I like my system with the linear regression, and um, I'll compare that linear regression with the 200 EMA. That's another one of my favorite bread and butter trades. So um, linear regression will get you know sandwiched between linear regression and that EMA and go for those counter trend trades. Uh, I've got that on one, one of my other templates. But um, this to me is one of the easiest uh, times to understand that it's good to get into the market because you've got momentum and range expansion. So um, now that I'm able to put a location on it with a target, either a 60 minute target or a 15 minute target with my, um, um, statistical levels uh, for profit target one, two, and three. So you can put it on the same chart. So like if you want, um, you know, just to take your same time frame, you can certainly do that instead of using a higher time frame. But um, I think these higher time frames is uh, really what I envisioned this indicator to do, but it will work on your same time frame also. This is a picture of that low range contraction price melting up long. So these are just longs uh, with the price moving or the range contracting. So you can see that um, there were some good opportunities uh, with this um, setting and I'll show you how to get that with the indicators. Uh, very easy to do, um, but these are that, you know, you definitely see price moving up. It's much easier to um, get the high, high shorts when the range is expanding with your momentum expanding to the downside, you're going to get those big flushes 
um, and this is very easy to set up too. So you're using your slope of your um, momentum with the range expansion slope and um, looking for shorts. Now you can filter this if you want so that you're not taking a trade above your mid band. So I've got just like a little mid band on here on this template, whatever your filter is, if you want to do that, um, these are not filtered. These are just signals on, you know, the range um, expanding a little bit, getting a short signal. So these make, this is that whee part of that downside, um, you know, if you're going to go up sideways and down, this is the fast part and to me the easiest, easiest part to trade. But um, they don't last forever, especially in, an, in a strong up market. Kind of, kind of dangerous to do that when you're we're in a big bull market like we are in, with the equity indexes. So <clears throat> take take those moves sparingly. Um, if you don't like trading the um, minute bars, uh, there is a trick to these Unirinkos that I like to use, and um, just you know taking your um, bar size, a five minute or a 15 minute. So if you have a five minute ATR at five and a half points and you want a two multiplier on that, um, you can use a two or a three multiplier. You get your um, point, so five and a half times two is 11, times four for your four uh, ticks per point is 44 ticks. So on the Unirinko, you can make your bar size 1034 or 143 uh, with a one offset. Um, and that gives you the smoothness that you may be looking for so that you can take these reversals um, much easier uh, when you match the bar size to that ATR. So um, this can provide some stability for you so that you can go in and grab some profits when you've got your um, momentum on your side. You know, always higher time frame trend, look at your market analyzer, make sure that your you know, linear regression, your higher time frame momentum are on your side, and then trade to these targets. Now that I've got the um, higher time frame targets for the um, range uh, already calculated out for you uh, for the standard deviations with the indicator, you now have more targets to trade to than just um, pivot points or um, something else that we're going to use. Um, and, you know, once you start hitting these all the time, you don't have to like trade a mile to make a successful trader. You just have to have a plan, manage your risk. This is a good way to manage risk because if the trade's going to work out, you know it's going to work out immediately. You don't ever have to guess this Unirinko bar. If the trade is going to work out, it's going to go, right? So you can put literally two ticks behind that low and you're in. And so this is really a good way uh, to get some ticks, uh, build up the account slowly, and stay with it. So momentum. Higher time frame trend, and if you if you know if you are so lucky that you've got a expanding range, you know hold on to it, trade to that level, and then get off, or to whatever your profit target is. And the the one thing about trading that I have learned the hard way is don't over trade. So um, trade your plan, if you're only going to trade three hours in the morning, stick to that. Don't try to get involved in that afternoon session because um, you may just end up, you're not used to that session time frame, um, coughing it all, all your profits back up. But um, if you, I think that there's certainly definitely ways to get a trade plan for a small account, something that is standardized and um, repeatable. Um, and systematic and just go with it, you know, day after day after day and make um, small, as um, Top Step Trader will tell you, uh, little singles don't hit for home runs. Hit your singles, get your little 
money in your account, close it down, wait for the next day, do it over and over and over, and then you know that you've got something successful. Another thing to be looking for is this four, this is the LR4, and that is my favorite uh, line to trade uh, on that linear regression. I have a one and a four. I like to trade that four and four slope. Um, so when I've got price above that four and it's sloping up, and here you can see that the linear regression was white and uh, momentum was moving up nicely, um, you know, it just sort of presents itself to you, um, these opportunities. So uh, you'll get used to um, used to that once you start using these Unirinkos. Same thing with the way of um, the way I flip this around. Um, you can put the uh, Unirinko on a one tick 43 uh, to get that same 44 ticks. And then you've got the um, bars where they you can see the pullbacks into the value and we can set up Bloodhound to take signals at these specific levels. I've got a template I can show you um, that we can use to do that and that way you can mitigate your risk. Um, keeping in this uh, vein of 7, 14, 21, 28, um, you can use your um, trend filter um, to make sure that if it gets, you know, a certain distance behind that um, to, to get out of a trade. Um, and if it, not to worry, if it comes back in and hits your line, you can get back in. So it's best to leave, you know, this strategy was to mitigate risk, pulls back into the value area, pick up your, your contract, you want to go back on the trajectory of that line, ideally looking for a target if possible, but um, definitely um, trying to get your points, holding in those pullbacks, and then adding on wherever possible uh, going back up with a small amount of risk. Uh, Blackbird will allow you, if you do get uh, a stop out, say you had it here, you may not have gotten stopped out, but here you may have, um, it'll get you back in on the same bar. So not to worry, it's best to take a small stop out and then get back in for a larger gain than to sit there and wait for a mile in the wrong direction. So this is a chart set up so that it can be very, very, very structured, very minimal, very specific, and um, you know, take these opportunities to get in where the market pulls back into these averages, because that you know that they're going to be pulling back into the averages. That's their job, right? That's what the market makers do. They wait for those impulse moves and they send the price back into the averages and that's where the other traders are sitting there waiting to pick up orders and send it back up, right? So here's a, just a screenshot of um, what my new desktop will look like, where I can have my smaller five minute bar, maybe with a 60 minute profit target, the standard deviations of what that 60 minute chart will look like. I can see whether I'm above or below my main trend filter line, um, and I can see if my range is a con contra you know, contracting or expanding, and then trade accordingly. Um, and then, of course, have my three standard um, trade levels, one, two, three, up or down, that I like to use during that three-hour uh, trading session. Um, <clears throat> So this this has been working out so well. I'm so happy to have it on the chart. I cannot tell you that I've got my PT123 now on the chart. And I could set it up for a special. If you want to trade the Asia session, you can use it. If you want to trade the Europe session, um, you can use it. So here's the concept in case you didn't get it. This 14 period range can be used um, for a 60-minute um, chart or a special time session. So if you're going to be trading the London session, maybe you want it between, you know, um, 
2 a.m. and 6 a.m. Um, Central Standard Time. I don't know what it, time would be in London, but um, or maybe you want at midnight to 6 a.m. You would know what that range, that 14 period range on that session would be, and then you can draw your PT 123s above and below. It's going to be, it's fractal. It's going to be the same whether it's a 60 minute bar or a daily bar or a special time session. You're going to have the same amount of um, <clears throat> market structure. Um, it's just amazing how it works out. So here is a, the last screenshot before we go into the live session where you can see how Bloodhound can be set up very, very well to let you know that you're only looking for longs <laughs> in case you're trying to short it, you know. No, we only want to be looking for longs. And then over here we would have our um, targets to try to shoot to and then, you know, try to make it confluence with a Globex high that's sitting on a pivot point at your one hour initial balance high. I mean, anytime you can get those three confluences or something, that's one hell of a target, and especially if you can get it to line up with the standard deviation for that 14 period range, you know, that that's like, you know, the nirvana. So before we look at the live charts, I just wanna remind you that I am having an open house and please come in, send a, um, email to me support at jautotradingstrategies.com and we will get you set up for that open house. Um, I'll send out the invite um, in the mornings um, so don't worry just like today I'll send that invite out. So let me minimize this and we'll look at the charts. Um, this is the live screen of here is the three um, targets uh, PT1, 2, and 3. See, we did not get to PT3 today. Um, we got to PT1 and 2. Let me open this up and show you. So you can see that we've been hitting these upward, upward targets. And I liked this action, this price action. It came down to the yesterday PT2 and then rallied up to today's PT2. So the markets are very, very structured on this 14 period range, guys. Um, just just love nailing these um, intraday targets or having a game plan, just having a, you know, a target area. If you don't, you know, want to trade this little three hour special session with me, you don't, you don't have to. You can, you know, put this together just on a plain vanilla two minute with a 60 minute target or, or 15 minute target. Um, show you what the indicator looks like. It it's a two part indicator when you load it. I've got um, part one. Just has the three um, levels on it: one, two, and three. And that draws the uh, indicator on the chart. The second part, I'll go. I'll create a video to show you how to do it. You can do one or the other. You can do that special session time frame, or you can select a uh, minute. So if you wanted to see what it looked like with a two-minute chart with a 15-minute range. You can change that very easily, um, just like that. If you want to see what it looks like with a 180 minute range, I mean, it is, you just type in your range period and you can get the standard deviations for that period. So you can see how structured this market was in between the 180 minutes in between that PT1. So it's just a very flat, you know, market, normal distribution. And um, <clears throat> there's nothing more flat than that, right? So um, very simple indicator to work with. Um, and then um, let me put it, show you what it looks like just by itself on a two minute.
So if you just want to use um, the current charts range, you can do that also. And there's some amazing, I've been looking at these signals, uh, looking for, you know, any opportunity uh, for me to get a signal off of a line. You know, it's like, give me a line. I want to bounce off of it, right? So um, I'm, you know, in an uptrend looking for price to get below, you know, on the lower edges. And that would be an excellent location to set up a signal so that when the candle got below it and came back up, we can get a signal off that line and then bounce it up and maybe try to try take it to the um, upward level, you know, just for quick bounces. Uh, I know you guys aren't as, um, you know, probably adventurous as I am uh, for my quick strikes and have more of a long-term game plan that, um, and that's why I have the higher time frame targets that we can trade to, but I am just so excited to get this um, indicator built because I know I can do a lot uh, with these lower wicks off of these levels. Uh, so let's take a look at this on a five minute target. So, um, and you'll see this widen, widen out and um, <clears throat> sometimes price will get above or below its skis, get outside of a level. Um, and that's your short term imbalance. This is where the market maker is going to step in, push price back to the middle of the range. And um, looks like this was a coast to coast, went from the opposite end to the top. But this is what price does. It just goes up and down between these ranges. And um, being able to, ha you know, use Bloodhound to um, get a signal off of any line. I've got plenty of lines now to um, try to take these signals from. So I'm very, very happy. Um, put a 15 minute chart up and show you what that looks like. And the same, same principle, um, you're wanting <clears throat> to engage the market in a, in a long situation when price gets to the bottom of these ranges and starts graduating up every time it, you know, gets to, instead of buying high, that's what a lot of, you know, mistakes that traders will make is, you know, their, their strategies are good. There's nothing wrong with their strategies, except you're getting in at the top of the bar close and price will always come back on you. And so you either give up, you know, or get out because you're losing a little bit before it turns around. So if you can make your plan so that you're buying on a lower pullback and a, in an uptrend so that you minimize that, um, you know, top itis and you're not sitting there waiting for it to turn all the way back around uh, while you're drawdown, you know, incurring that drawdown. That's the most painful part. But the easiest thing to do is just get in with this slope. So here, let me show you Bloodhound. So here are those high, high longs. So this is where, this is just the PT indicator. This is not momentum or anything. Well, I take that back. The PT indicator with momentum. I do have it set up with momentum. So when momentum is long um, with that long uh, price, you have to have a direction. Um, the indicator by itself is non-directional, remember? So this long short modifier is the key. Um, this shows you all the longs and you can see that you get the longs on the down markets also. So um, 
creating momentum with it. And then a hike and ashy. Get rid of that yellow one. There we go. <clears throat> so now we've got the high, high longs just on the um, long bars. Very easy. If we want the high, high shorts, those are your high, high shorts. And that's your high um, range, momentum, and short. Your low low longs that's that high drift that drift up on that low uh the contraction the market still moves up very difficult for me i i hate these um you don't know how far it's going to go and um i'm always nervous about this this is the one this is the one trade that i get nervous about so um especially when you're coming in off of a bottom you want to see like a directional change um, you know here's your psychology so I know that I'm getting towards the bottom of the range that I should be looking for a reversal but I would prefer to see that the range expand when it goes up and not contract <laughs> so um, that doesn't mean that the price won't go up so and, and again we're on very small bars so, you know we're trying to tame a two minute chart so it's much easier to do this on a higher time frame chart there we go 15 minute um and i've got one set up for um high low long so there's your highs and your lows with a long so if you're looking for long that's when you want to get involved in the market so we can set that up with a higher time frame target you know we could even set it up and get the bounces on the lower time frame um, profit target areas with these higher candles you know I've thought about that too I mean I'm thinking about you know 13 different ways to Sunday to get these lower bounces off of these levels because when you're in an uptrend that's when you want to you know you definitely want to be seeking out those uh, spike downs at this level at these lower levels and so now we've got plenty of lines to take these um, uh, spike downs on because that's where we want to engage the market right there and then t take it back up because that that's the the lowest risk possible with the highest reward so um, many many different ways to get um, you know some trading ideas with these um, rain pro profit target levels um, So let me um, put this on back on a um, 180 or 60 minute chart. And that'll give us more standard levels to, sh to shoot for. Um, realistic levels that are easily obtainable. Um, and the, the PT1s are the easiest levels to hit every day and it's like every day you know that that level is going to get hit so if you know something is going to get hit every day aim for it especially if price is giving you the signals going towards it that that should be your first target all right if you know it's going to get hit that should that should be your first payday right there Hey Zach, how are you doing, Zach? How are you, everything going well? Zach's going to help us with Blackbird. Let me 
Yeah, Zach turned the mic on. I'm glad to hear that. If you want to pitch in, let me get um, Blackbird on the chart here so that we can just show you. If you have any questions about Blackbird, um, definitely Zach is the guy to talk to. He, I'm not as proficient on Blackbird as I need to be. It is um, something that I'm still um, trying to get through all of the um, ins and outs on. I get that. Have to in, you have to click enabled. So also on these strategies, um, getting something off of a lower level like this in real time, you need to be using um, on price change or on each tick. Um, so you have to know what strategy you're going to be doing, how you're going to be coding it up. Otherwise, you're going to be sticking to the bar change, uh, the bar close um, for a strategy. Um, so if you and, and you have to think about how you're going to be um, using your um, entry signal. The profit target signal um, will work on what, whether you've got a bar close or price change. So your decision on how that calculation should be coming uh, should be based on the signal that you're going to be um, using this with. You can sit there and um, use this uh, discretionary um, trading by using these outside signals uh, if you want to or you can you don't have to have a bloodhound signal but if you have a bloodhound signal strategy put together you can use it you can use an indicator based signal so um, you could set it up so that if it were above your trend filter um, you know well you'd probably want to put a bloodhound strategy together I was going to say with momentum and other things that's exactly what bloodhound is there for it's just so simple uh, to put it together but in the order set, this is where you can really, really go to town on these. You can make, um, and I'll go over this with you in the trade room, we'll have more time, um, more signals um, line up so that you can get them at specific entry locations, like on a trend line or my um, PT, one, two, two or three levels. So this, um, PT2 um, on a low bar and an uptrend will be a very popular one that I'll start trying to use um, uh, for an entry uh, and a, you know for a long-term signal but for a profit target you would just set the indicator in as um, the value and choose the indicator uh, to take whatever level that you were aiming for uh, above or below. Uh, PTA is above, PTB is below. So if you know you're going long uh, and you wanted to use it in, as an indicator and just trade PTA2, you can um, do that. This is on the same time frame. Right now, the multiple time frame is not working um, set up as an indicator. Um, they'll be working on trying to get that um, so that we can use um, the multiple time frame or the session but right now it's not recognizing it as an indicator from the setting so we'll be going over that with you in the trade room I can build these signals for profit target as well as a um, entry in Bloodhound um, and I'll be building my signals for my trade logic uh, to be run through the platform um, that way. So um, there's also another way to bring a signal in and that is through um, the um, market entry where you can bring another template in and say that if the, the lower um, close, you know, you can come up with whatever condition you want. I usually will trigger on a level with a low, pick up a trigger on a level. And so say I had a condition up here uh, for it to be a long condition, then I can trigger my entry on that specific 
line or level that I'm looking at to pick pick the trade up once it crosses that level, once that condition builds. Uh, and I can put that condition here right in the market entry. That way, just because I have a condition going, I won't actually get the signal until the low crosses my line, uh, getting me in um, with the least amount of risk possible so that I'm not entering on the top uh, of that bar each time, entering, entering low and then rallying it up. So um, I think you all get what I'm talking about. So much, much better uh, to fine tune those entries wherever possible. So um, I think having the combination of um, the trade manager uh, with a strategy like this is uh, absolutely the best way to go. Let me show you my um, HILO2 uh, indicator. I've got it sort of structured with, with the uh, PT indicator. And what I've noticed, uh, first I try to um, set my um, bar size according to the ATR, as we discussed. So right up at the top, I've got my ATR. So it was a little bit larger. I may need to adjust that bar size. So 725. Oops. Ex accidentally started running a calculation on my HP 12C. Um, so you would, uh, oops, there it goes. 7.25. Um, so I'd want to use two times that ATR, maybe 1450. So I'd want to set my bar for 58 instead of 43. Um, so go into your data and I would want to put a 157. One tick offset would be the 58 if you want to be exact. So I'm working with that ATR um, that way and, um, oops. Um, trying to minimize um, these turnarounds as much as possible. So it looked like it was just short of a few ticks on that. May have gone because the there it is. Um, once you get your ATR correct uh, during that high drive time instead of the end of the day um, where the price was coming down a little bit, that's where you can come in and hit these levels, like I said, um, very, very specifically. So if you just want the twos or if you do want the threes, you can do that. and. We even have it set up that if you want it to hit a three first, you can take the two after that. So require the three to get hit, but you won't get triggered until it comes back down and hits the two before you take off and go in that direction. So there's a lot you can do in uh, Blackbird with hitting specific lines. There's a four right there. So um, got it set up. You know, if you just want to take the outer tippy top ones and not take any of the others, you can do that. And that minimizes the risk even more. And it, the thing with this strategy is, is if you're going to be trading these lower ones, you've got to realize that price is going to be coming back for that trend filter. That's where the market makers take this. And if you get your ATR set up correctly, you'll see that that trend filter um, is just about where that price stops. Um, so the market makers were pretty on target with their algo sending it back down. Um, for, you know, more direction. Um, so it's just very interesting um, how this works. Um, but that is their job to send it into the um, 
value area, this is the maximum risk that you have. I actually have a new, another new indicator that I haven't shown you yet that measures the distance, oops, measures the distance between the um, price and that um, trend filter so that I can use that opposite uh, distance for a stop or a um, target. So if I'm picking up an entry, say if you were going to do it on the bar close, you could set your profit target for an equal distance the, from where it's running to that uh, trend filter. So that's something very excited that I have. I think that'll be a big improvement for this indicator here. So there's your risk. And now I can set the profit target uh, exactly a one-to-one -to, -one to the risk of the um, EMA uh, trend filter. So, and if you and if you think about what I was saying about that um, 7, 14, 28, 42, um, you can um, plop the, your line in the sand um, on this, like a, with a donkey in, and um, use this as a condition um, that if you get um, beyond this line by a certain number of ticks, it'll, you'll get stopped out so that you're not carrying it all the way to the EMA, to the trend filter. So that's your second stop level. So you would have gotten a stop out here, but then um, if you had set this to uh, trade the twos, you could have gotten back in, made up your loss. But the actual risk, uh, as you can see, is right here. That's your risk zone. All of that, that is the amount of risk you need to be aware of for trading and that would apply to your minute bars. So um, I don't know if you all got that. I don't see any other questions. Zach, do you um, have anything you can add for um, Blackbird or Bloodhound? Um, no, not specifically. Um, yeah, just so you, you're aware, I can't. I, I don't, I'm not seeing the uh, Q&A window right now. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Think, there yeah, actually think, aren't any questions. There there were absolutely oh. nobody's asking questions. So <laughs> not a single one. All right. That makes it easy. <laughs> <laughs> Very quiet room. So um, the, the main thing um, that, you know, with Blackbird is that you've got um, a signal location up here that you can put a bloodhound signal in or an indicator based signal and usually use it for bloodhound signals and um, yeah. then manage your order sets and trail. He, he has uh, many different automatic um, pre-programmed trailing feature, features or set up for you auto automatically. Uh, where you can go oh, in and quick list. Quick that's list. Our, our quick list. Yeah. 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 So you quickly set set something up. Yep. Very quickly. So if you want to change the ATR from a 20 period to a 14, you would do it here. But very very fast, change it to a three versus a two. Now, Zach, are you going to be able to allow us to make uh, changes to the quick list ourselves and save them? Probably not. That would be very complicated for okay. a very simple task, you know, just kind of weighing the amount of time it would take to program that versus the benefits. Um, don't count on it. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'd have yeah. way too, we'd probably have so many quick lists going it would mess it all up and we'd be asking you to please put it back to the default. Yeah. And I mean, it, it, you know, if you got a suggestion, you know, I mean, we, we always welcome uh, suggestions, you know, from people. Mm -hmm. So if you got an idea, Julia, you're, you know, just go ahead and submit it to me and mm -hmm. yeah, we'll, 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 we're not going to add everybody's suggestions into it. Mm -hmm. you know, we want to make sure that, that, you know, when you look at this quick list, you can see that they're, they're very generic um, and very common amongst traders. 
So um, yeah, we probably won't put anything really specialized or niche in there, but um, but uh, yeah, we're always welcome to yeah evaluate, evaluate people's suggestions. Well, there is a pretty good starter list too because you can um, use what you've got and then maybe change it up. So you've got a, a place setting. So if you want to use an indicator, you can choose one that's got an indicator and then change your indicator out for that. So if you wanted to use a, a super trend instead of the parabolic SAR, you could do that. Mm -hmm. Make it make it pretty easy, um, which I like a lot. Um, I think the most hidden feature in Blackbird to me is this, you know, the, the ability to use your market entry uh, where you want uh, here. So entering after a certain profit or loss, um, you know, making sure, you know, you, if you have a condition first in your Bloodhound, uh, you can set up a um, template to say that I want the seven moving average to be uh, above the 21 or the 28 to be a 21 to be above the 28, you know, in the, you know, to get your spread of your indicator fans to be the condition. And then I want to enter at the prior bar low or something like that. You can um, really delineate where you're entering in very, very, very fine tuned uh, with it uh, here. And um, I just think that this is a, hidden feature that not a lot of people are paying attention to is they go right for the um, market entry or the limit entry. Have you yeah. been? Correct. Right. Right. You really, uh, yeah, the trader really, um, you know, before people really discover that, um, your mindset, uh, is, is, um, what am I going to say? Yeah. The people who, who really dive deep into that are those who are, really focused on designing an auto trader. Yeah. Those kind of auto trader um, type, type of personalities are the ones that are going to yeah, focus in and, and discover that and, and utilize that the most. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there's just, you know, um, the sky's the limit. Uh, so whatever you can think of, you can pretty much do with this um, trade manager. So it's just um, very, very well thought out, I think. Very well thought out. So, um, and especially for the top step combine, having this um, would be crucial because you can um, have the trade manager uh, exit the trade at a specific uh, net profit or loss overall and force during the trade session. So you can very much control, you know, if you're getting towards your um, daily loss limit or something like that, you can have the brakes put on um, so that you don't run over your level. So you really should not be able to um, blow up a combine on the first try anymore with, with Blackbird, uh, which is very helpful. Um, and it's what I think is the most genius thing about this is um, setting a profit target. So um, you can likewise say that I want to stop trading after um, a certain benchmark is reached um, or turn on the watermark at that point so that you're not going to lose um, anything, you know, you set up your watermark. If I hit a thousand dollars, don't let me lose anything under eight hundred. You know, so you always go home with something. Um, so I think having this, um, these two functions would make the combine so much easier to manage. Also, scheduling, uh, restricting trades. Um, you can come in and say that non-form payroll reports coming out on Friday. Do not trade that. You know. Uh, in fact, if you just want to avoid 7.30 a.m. altogether and make sure it doesn't start trading until after that. Or like on a Monday, there's a report that comes out at 9 a.m., you know, that first Monday of the month. Um, be very specific uh, and block out those times where you don't want it to be trading. 
So, um... yeah, if you wanted to show something in the scheduler, um, you could just uh, where it says load session template, mm -hmm. click, on, click on that and then scroll all the way down to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yep. And there's RTH. There you go. That's what most people yep. will use right there. Yeah. So you can start with that as your base template mm -hmm. yep. and then customize. Yeah. When you want to trade from there. Right. And go inside and um, carve out a report or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I um, pretty much stick to my mm -hmm. uh, three hours in the morning. There's, so there's you can, me. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. you very, very, very limited. So, um, yep, got it set up, ready to go. Um, so, yep, no, I just absolutely love it. It's probably... Um, yeah, you know, now that you're uh, now that you have this new indicator to kind of set your profit targets there, um, that's that's is really what the risk management part of Blackbird was designed for. Is when you're building an auto trader and you're using indicators to set either your profit target and or your stop loss. Well, you know, when you're using indicators, you really have no um, absolute assurance that your indicators are going to be setting uh, an appropriate risk reward um, uh, yeah risk versus reward um, um, ratio there and so that's what the risk management is for is you can if you enable the risk management what it'll do is blackbird will pass on trades uh, that have a l lower mm -hmm. risk reward ratio mm -hmm. so, so that way so if you're if your indicator is setting your, you know, stop loss too far out, Blackbird will just pass on that trade because mm -hmm. the risk was too great versus versus the the reward to the profit um, target. Absolutely, yeah, to profit yeah. target, right, mm -hmm. right, vice right, versa. So that that's yeah. Uh, so that's what the yeah when when the risk reward really comes into play is yeah is once you start using indicators, custom mm -hmm. indicators. To, to set your profit targets and stop losses. Yeah, yeah. that makes a huge difference um, yeah. because there can be a substantial difference between these levels, uh, you know, incurring a much larger drawdown, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, that's that's wonderful. Uh, no, every, I think it's very, very well thought out. So, um, you know, just putting your safeguard on it, you know, don't let me, you know, take a hit beyond $400 or whatever you want it want it to be, um, not only exit it, but if you put your money management in there also, that you can set your net max loss for the day also. Mm -hmm. So um, I think this would be ideal for the combine. So, yeah, definitely yeah. offload some of that, uh, some of that processing, yeah, onto the computer. Yeah. 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 So I appreciate your, your stopping in. I don't see any other questions. Um, guys, if y'all want to ask Zach anything while he's here, please do so. Um, I have, um, I think I'm at the end. I want to uh, remind everyone the open house is um, Thursday, uh, and then next week, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then um, there's going to be a Black Friday uh, cyber event um, that we'll be having. And if you would like to try uh, Blackbird um, or Bloodhound for the first time, um, we're having a super, super deal for that. Um, and definitely um, keep that in mind. Um, the cost of uh, Blackbird and Bloodhound are um, included, so you will not have to outlay any price for that. So um, to, to get a, a separate license for Bloodhound and Blackbird can, can be uh, quite a big um, purchase. So just getting uh, your feet wet, being able to use it for a three-month period so that you can really, really get inside of it with a, a mini package uh, that would give you uh, some indicators um, and um, basic uh, Bloodhound templates. Um, 
the mini package has the um, market analyzer templates and the um, open range and linear regression so that you can build your own um, learn Bloodhound to build your own settings and use Blackbird with it. Uh, come join us in the trade room so that you can um, uh, ask questions about how to use it. It's a perfect time to do so. That Black Friday event will be through the end of the month. So um, that's about it. Um, indicators over, over here separately now and a complete package uh, if you wanted to um, get everything bundled together you can certainly do so but don't pass up that Black Friday offer uh, that will be through December 2nd and with that I guess we don't have any questions um, that'll do it for today I do appreciate everyone coming out very much I hope you understood um, what we were trying to accomplish with these uh, profit targets uh, both on a lower time frame and a higher time frame and come check it out in the trade room as we explore it together uh, like I said I just got the indicator built and um, distributed today so I'm just sort of having my own um, chance to go through and get my templates built from it I haven't done that yet but I'll be working on getting that out and for my complete package members I'll be uh, generating this uh, indicator to you um, uh, before the weekend is out. So y'all can be having it to uh, look at over the weekend. Thank you so much for coming. I do appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Top Step, for having us. It's a great program. I uh, hope everyone will um, join a combine and um, pick up um, indicator or template and Bloodhound and Blackbird. And happy trading. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. Y'all take care. All right. Great, Thank Julie. You. I'll see Thank you tomorrow you, morning. Thank you so much. Yeah. See Appreciate you tomorrow it. morning. Okay. okay. Thanks. Bye-bye.